Hey everyone, it's Tiny Pico testing jig time again. So in the video today I want to have a bit of a talk about a change I want to make on the PCB. Well there's a few changes I want to make on the PCB. Firstly I want to just quickly mention that I solved the issue that we saw in the live stream the other day when the Tiny Pico would go through a flash process and then afterwards I couldn't run it through a flashing process again and pulling it off here and trying to program it either directly from the Pi or from my Mac wasn't working for a period of time and then all of a sudden it started working again. Now I have no idea internally what was happening on the Pico but that whole process was being caused by me having the reset line of the Tiny Pico connected to an I.O. on my board and me trying to physically reset the board through taking that pin low and then high because the reset line is always kept high and to reset the Tiny Pico you pull it low and no matter what type of timing I used from the I.O. on the Tiny Pico it would actually reset the board but it would get it into the state where although I still could connect to the board through a REPL through R shell and actually program the board what I couldn't do is use ESP tool to connect to it to be able to flash it or erase it. I don't quite understand why or what state I got the Tiny Pico into but that was the cause. As soon as I made the reset line IO an input and let it float and never touch it I've been able to flash this board a million times and it's been fine. And no joke I have actually flashed it a lot. Maybe not a million but a lot of times over the last few days. Anyway that's a change that I want to make on the PCB but the the biggest change I want to make on the PCB is something I discussed the other day on my live stream which is to do with how I power the Tiny Pico. So first let's explain what the problem is, what I'm trying to solve with it. So right now whether the board is placed inside the Tiny Pico test jig before the USB is plugged in or whether the USB is plugged in first, either way the second the USB is plugged in it's powering the Tiny Pico and what that means is if there's a power short on the board so power and ground are connected somehow, a bridge somewhere or just a faulty part, then straight away as soon as power comes to this board it's going to pull a unknown amount of non-limited current from the USB port on the Pi and the only way to detect and then disconnect it, I mean my board can detect it, but to stop that from happening the only way is to physically pull the USB cable out from this end or this end. By that point the Tiny Pico is probably dead which is fine, I mean, <laughs> obviously I don't want to destroy them, but if there was a short on the board anyway, then it's probably dead regardless. But it's likely to destroy the USB port on the Pi, because having no current limiting ability would just destroy the USB. So I don't want that to happen, and right now there's no physical way that I can prevent that from happening rather than pulling the cable. And so if the board is plugged in by the tester, like this, and then placed, by the time they've plugged it in and tried to place it, it's too late, it's blown everything up. So I need a way of isolating the power and not actually powering it directly from the USB. So this is my plan. Now I, I glossed over it in my last live stream, but I'm going to draw it up a bit better. So if I just say this is my board, here's where the Tiny Pico currently sits, not to scale, All right? and the USB connector comes here. What I'm going to do is two things. I'm going to add a micro B USB connector on my board over here right with the entry get that way and I'm going to place the USB A female port over here with the entry this way. They're not necessarily going to be sitting exactly there but this is the rough idea right and the D plus and the D minus are going to be connected so that's D minus D plus there for the data lines this end here is going to be connected to the Pi and this end over here is going to be connected to the Tiny Pico. So what I've basically done is just created an extender. But what that allows me to do is take my grounds on both and put them to ground. I can leave this power here floating, I don't need to connect that at all because I'm not going to be powering from the Pi, the USB port. And I can use the power on this side and use a MOSFET to turn the power on and off. And that MOSFET, I'm just going to draw a really terrible MOSFET here, really terrible, is going to be controlled from an I.O. 
on the Pi. And this will be going to 5 volts. So what I'm going to be able to do is use this I.O. to turn the MOSFET on and off. Now, I've already got short detection on the Tiny Pico on the test jig. So this ground pin down the bottom here, there's two ground pins. This ground pin down the bottom here is actually pulled high. It's not connected to ground. It's pulled high and it's connected to an I.O. And I use that right now to detect whether the board has been put down or not. Obviously the board has to be powered for that detection to happen. But when the board is connected, that if the board doesn't have a short, that ground is pulled low. And that means that the testing jig can detect that a board has been placed in the test jig, which is great. But by that point, it's already blown the USB port if there's a short on the board. So what I'll be able to do now with this FET is the FET will be turned off. So there'll be no power going to the USB port. So the test engineer or whoever they are can plug the board in, doesn't power up. They can place the board, doesn't power up. Obviously, how they place it and clamp it is for a different video. And then when they say begin by pushing the button, the very first thing I can do is quickly turn the FET on. So allow five volts to go to the tiny Pico and immediately check that ground sense pin. And if their ground sense pin is still high, immediately shut the power down. Now, I don't know how fast I can do that, but it's going to be very fast. Fast enough that, again, if the Tiny Pico has got a short, it's likely dead anyway, but fast enough that I'm not going to damage any other electronics on the board. And I've completely isolated the USB ports, so there's no chance of, get, of pulling current from this USB here because the power is not even connected in any way. I'm pulling 5 volts from the actual GPIO, so I could still technically damage the Pi, but not the USB port. But being able to turn the MOSFET off straight away is going to allow me to hopefully protect the Pi. Now what I'm also going to do is stick in line here a PTC. So a PTC is basically is a polyfuse, it's a resettable fuse, and assuming I can find one that allows me to pull at least 500 milliamps, because that's what the Tiny Pico requires when it initializes the antennas, then anything above that will also, hopefully, current will cut off before it's too late. So that's my plan. It means that I can software control the power coming in. I can have some form of current limiting here. I want it to be able to shut itself down, the, the PTC, if there's too much current, but allow me to check that there's a short or not before I continue the test. Now, if it doesn't find a short, the next thing I'll do is check that the 5 volt line on the Tiny Pico is good with my 5 volt sense I.O. because I have an I.O. connected to the 5 volt line and I have an I.O. connected to the 3.3 volt line. If the 5 volt line is fine, and obviously the 5 volt line is going through a voltage divider because the I.O. on the header pins of the Pi is only 3.3 volts. If that's fine, then I check the 3 volt line. If the 3 volt line is fine, then I know everything's okay. But if there's a short, I can shut the power down straight away. If there isn't a short, but the 5 volt line is playing up, I can shut the power down straight away. And if there's no 3.3 volt line, I can show an error and shut the power down. Right now, any error that's shown on the board, it shows the error on the board, which is great with you know a 5 volt fail or 3 volt fail, but the power keeps going to the tiny Pico. There's no physical way of shutting that down. I can't tell the Pi to shut power down from the USB. So this is designed to solve all of that. So today in this video, I'm just going to work on the schematic of my revision two. I'm not going to relay out the board right now because I can't relay out the board and add all these components onto where they're going to go until I solve the mechanical side, which is the total clamp, how that's going to sit on the board, how that's going to, where the tiny picker is going to sit, Obviously, I have the issue right now where the Tiny Pico is hanging over the screen, which isn't really great, and I need to build casing around the Tiny Pico to make sure that it can only be placed exactly on the pins, like a guide for the person adding it on. Again, something we discussed in the previous live stream. So there's going to be some rearranging to happen anyway, and I don't know how much rearranging it's going to take until I get my toggle clamps, which are on the way because that's going to require placement of the clamp onto the board and I need to be able to check the distances and the height. So it could be a little bit of rearranging, could be a lot of rearranging. So right now it's just going to be a schematic change that I do. 
but I'm excited to get that implemented. So let's jump over to Eagle and have a bit of a play. Okay, here we are in Eagle. So this is the revision one board. So before I forget, I should probably just um, <laughs> make this revision two. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm not gonna relay the board out today. I just want to work on the schematic side. So here's our schematic view. And it's pretty messy, I apologize. I'm going to just move some of this around, I guess. Do some cleanup, just so I've got some space. I need to remove some things. So remember, I need to get rid of this TP reset. I don't want that, I don't need that resistor. The resistor actually wasn't populated anyway. Um, over here, this TP reset, I'm gonna reuse that line. I'm gonna call that um, TP power control. I'll use that later. Okay, now I need to connect my ground over here, which is the input for the tiny Pico. I need this to be connected to my ground test. I don't want any pin from the tiny Pico connected directly to ground because that's going to pretty much disable my ability to switch the power on and off and be able to test for a short circuit. So over on this side, I've got a ground test connected to 3.3 volts being pulled up. I'm going to just rename this side here to also be ground test. Okay, ground test, yes. So now the only actual ground connection I have on my tiny Pico at all is from the USB connector coming in, which is great because I'm going to be controlling power through the USB through a MOSFET. Okay, so we have, I think, enough room. I'm just going to move this over a little bit. Okay, so the first things I want to do are add USB ports. So I'm going to need a, a micro USB. I'm just going to use my micro USB that I've created my own custom footprint for, for the Tiny Pico. I'll put that over here. Going to need a USB A connector, and I want it to be a female connector. Okay, there's two here. NS, I assume that means no silk. I don't care if there's a silk, so I'm just going to pick that. And I'm going to just mirror that. Because I want to be able to connect the D plus and the D minus together, and I don't want to rotate it because then D minus will be upside down. Okay, so D minus to D minus, D plus to D plus. I want my ground to be connected. I'm just going to clone. I need a ground. Where's the ground over here? Ground supply. Just cloning that. Yes, and clone it again. Yes, okay, you should always use supply symbols when you can, if you can. Okay, now I'm going to leave VBUS on the micro USB not connected to anything. I'm not going to be powering anything from the power coming from the USB port. That's the whole point. So I'm going to use a P-channel MOSFET in this case. I want to do a big shout out to Ben who gave me a, a big rundown on <laughs> working with MOSFETs before I started implementing this. I have to admit that my MOSFET skills are pretty poor. I mean, I understand basic use of them. You know, uh, doing things like level shifting with them is pretty basic. But when it comes to actually understanding all the data sheet entries for a FET, when you're doing things like switching power and mixing different voltages and your, your, your voltage to gate thresholds and your current drains and everything else like that, I just, I don't know, I seem to struggle really understanding how to implement them. So then helped me out a great deal, so thank you very much. I'll stick his Twitter details below if you want to follow him on Twitter. So I'm going to use a P-channel FET in this case, so I don't really have to worry about the voltage gate source, and I'll explain why I won't have to worry about it in a moment. Let's grab a P-channel FET, P-channel. I just want to use a SOT23 P-channel. I'm not going to pick a particular model in this case because, is that a SOT23? It is, okay, cool. I've already chosen my, my P-channel for it, and it doesn't really matter what P-channel I'm choosing here as long as it's SOT23. Okay, so I'm going to put that here. Okay, okay. This to my VBUS coming in. The gate is going to be connected to my TP power control. Yes. Okay, that's the IO I'm going to use to switch this on and off. I need my 5 volts coming in here, and I'm going to use, there's two 5 volt pins on the Raspberry Pi. I'm already using one for my, just my general VBUS, what I'm calling VBUS, my 5 volt, but I'm going to use the other pin in this case, just so I can name it something different. So 
I'm going to call this um, TP 5 volts. And then I'm going to name this TP 5 volts. Cool. Now, I'm going to add a resistor. Well, I'm going to copy a resistor just to 10k from here. So I can pull up by default my gate. So I want that to be high all the time when I don't want to use it. And here's the trick that I'm going to do so I don't have to worry about minimum or maximum VGS. I'm going to obviously pull the power control low when I want to turn on the FET. So when I'm pulling it low, 5 volts is going to come through the FET, which is great, or just under 5 volts. But I'm not going to pull it high when I want to turn the FET off because then I have to worry about VGS. What I'm going to do instead is when I want to turn the FET off, I'm going to make my TP power control IO an input. I'm going to let it float so it doesn't have a high or a low and I'm going to let the pull up on the 5 volt through this resistor bring it high. So then I've technically got 5 volts coming in to the gate and I don't have to worry about VGS between 3.3 volts and 5 volts if I was using the IO voltage and that way I can switch it on and off quite easily. So that's the plan I'm doing there. Now I also need to add a PTC. So let's go find a PTC. I have some PTCs here, polyfuse, resettable polyfuse, but I'm pretty sure the ones I've got right now aren't rated to go up to 500 milliamps. I'll have to double check. I want something that can at least do 500 milliamps and I, I'm assuming that I can get one in a 12 by 6 package, but I might not be able to. So for right now, I'm just gonna use a 12 by 6 package anyway, and I'm going to put it here for now. And I'm probably gonna to wanna to rename this so I should have put the fuse down first. And look at me spreading myself out everywhere. You know, sometimes you design and then you clean up afterwards. TP 5 volts. So that's my TP 5 volts coming in. And I'm just going to rename this over here. So it doesn't think I can't connect things. I'm going to call that 5 volt PTC. So that's after the PTC. Cool. So now I've got some basic current protection to the PTC. Okay, now I have no idea what this little 3.3 volts is doing down here. So I'll just get rid of that. So I've set my two grounds to be ground test, which is great. I've got rid of my reset line, which is great. I've got a USB-A and a USB-B, and I have some basic circuitry to be able to control power going to my VBUS on my USB. Now I guess I should also, while I'm at it, um, just connect these to ground shielding. Now, as I said, from a board point of view, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of stuff here. I'm not really planning on, yeah, as I said, laying all this out now. For the moment, I'm just going to move it up because it, Eagle has a problem with things existing outside my zero, zero point here. It assumes it's out of bounds on this version of Eagle. So there are my different parts. I'm going to worry about laying them out and routing them once I've worked out how I'm going to rearrange everything but for now, I'm just happy that I've got some form of current and voltage control now where I can manually switch on and off the power and I can hopefully protect the Raspberry Pi. Even if I can't protect the Tiny Pico, at least the Raspberry Pi will not die and blow up on me on the production line of testing. Okay, I think that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all for watching. If you're new here, please don't forget to click that subscribe button and click the alarm bell to be notified when I have new videos coming out. To all my existing subs, thank you all. You're all fantastic. To my patrons, I can never thank you enough. You're all awesome. Thanks for your generosity. And until next time, I will catch you all later. Bye.